Welcome to this Windows channel and today we're taking a look at Windows 10 Pro Insider Preview build 10166. This was released this week, another build. We're getting you know lots of builds because as we get close to the July 29th release, of course, there's more and more uh, builds that are of good quality. And this one, once again, like the last few builds, um, are good quality builds, very stable, very good. I upgraded from 10159 because that's pretty much the way it has to be done if you go through the fast ring because it's fast ring only right now and no image files download. By the way, if you guys are still stuck at an old build that doesn't work, just download the latest image file from the Microsoft Insider program. It is 10159. You'll be able to upgrade from there to 10166. Uh, install went really well, no problems, no error messages, it just upgraded and uh, was uh, pretty fast, about 45 minutes on this machine. And uh, it could be faster if you have, a, by the way, a fast computer with an SSD drive, it could be even faster. Then uh, we just came through this nice build, everything stayed as it was, uh, start menu, like I had uh, chosen to put my start menu everything you know just stays the same pretty much in these builds uh, once again not a lot of big changes because this is mostly bug fixes so you know there's not a lot of changes through the different uh, builds right now there are thousands and thousands of bugs that are fixed and uh, all sorts of issues and uh, actually Microsoft once again says well you know what if you want to send feedback why not use the feedback app and try to send us you know your comments of what's wrong uh, some improvements slowly coming to Microsoft Edge which now has a little more in the options that are available so when you go into settings and stuff like that and w we can see for example in the advanced settings one of the things that really really will probably be there is um, you know when you search through the address bar you'll be able to add a new search provider as you see here it's grayed out so it's not yet available but I suspect that we'll eventually be able to use that to change uh, the address bar search you know I love this address bar search because it's like Google Chrome. I use it a lot. In Google Chrome, I will search for stuff in the address bar because it's just so easy. You get a Google search. So this is what I want to have in Microsoft Edge. Uh, that's for sure. Once again, Microsoft Edge, uh, not that much of a difference, but you can add different little stuff. There's a possibility now to add uh, also a home button and stuff like that. The favorites bar is still there. You still get the search and the... Uh, um, the share so when you click for example one of the um, articles on YouTube uh, or on the internet sorry and you want to share it with someone you still have you know that little button here that makes you uh, share with uh, here I have only one note because that's the only thing that's con configured on this Windows 10 machine but if you had Facebook Twitter app um, you know your mail app you can share through this and it's really nice to have that option make it easy to share a web page also of course still that nice option where you can simply click and you know write on a page do whatever you want help people you know see things you want to share a page and say look that's where the thing is that's where I told you to click or you just want to share a page for um, you know you're working on your computer for example you are uh, taking notes from a web page when shared with someone. It's really nice. That option is still there and it's going to stay. It's a, one of the great options of Microsoft Edge. But from that, it's an extremely fast browser and I really, really enjoy that. Um, it's one of the fastest browsers I have used. I can tell you that. And um, every page, everything that I go through is uh, really nice, you know. Uh, every time you click on a page, it's almost instant, and it's really, really nice to see that the browser works well. More and more compatibility in this uh, Microsoft Edge browser. So, um, you know, I still see some web pages that tell me, um, okay, this is not compatible, you need Internet Explorer or Google Chrome. Or, but I've seen that less and less. 
And uh, of course, there's that funny thing where I actually went to a Microsoft web page where it told me, oh, uh, this browser is not compatible. You need Internet Explorer. So that that's kind of funny you know, every time I see that because it's just uh, Microsoft, you know. So apart from that, great, great working um, Windows. Of course, still the same control panel, the same buttons, everything's uh, still there, visible. It's a nice way to do things. Uh, Windows Defender still has a, its own icon on the desktop uh, taskbar when you use it. Pretty much nothing has changed in the different settings menu and so on, but uh, slowly working. What's interesting in the uh, menu with the settings is that it's kind of a back and forth thing. When I click an option here, sometimes it brings me to the control panel. I go to the control panel and it sometimes brings me back here. Uh, you know, I wish that would change a little because I find it a little annoying to see that, okay, we have to go back and forth between control panel and uh, the system settings. Um, but at least, you know, the control panel is still there. So if you need to um, go and tweak settings, you have that familiar control panel that you can tweak and, you know, use icon view if you want uh, instead of categories and stuff like that. It's just that you're sent back and forth all the time. Uh, that's probably the most annoying feature. Uh, Cortana, still not available in Canada, and this is kind of very surprising, and I'm um, really, really wondering why. Because um, it's not, I don't think it's that difficult to have Cortana working pretty much everywhere, but uh, still not available in Canada. If you want to tweak it and want to use it, a little thing that you can do is change your computer settings and just say that you're in the United States and you'll see that Cortana is going to work. So wherever you are in the world, if you can't use Cortana, go into settings and tell your computer, oh, I'm in the United States. And you'll see that Cortana is going to start working. Um, Cortana, of course, is constantly improved uh, from time to time. Uh, so what's happening is that Cortana is being more and more integrated and a lot of people actually gave me some of the um you know the worries that people have about cortana and you know telling me well you know i don't like that cortana thing because it means that it listens to us and it you know can send a lot of information and we're not sure what it sends or not and i, I can understand that but at some point we have to do something you know we have to use it because at some point it is um you know something useful and you know just think about your smartphone it does it all the time if you have Android or uh, uh, an uh, you know an iPhone uh, your phone's listening to you so uh, it's not really worse and you know it seems that people are kind of scared a little more of Microsoft than other companies but I don't think it's worse with Microsoft or anything else so we got to be careful with that um, apart from that, another thing that changed because Microsoft was uh, calling his uh, modern and universal apps Xbox apps for videos or Xbox movies, Xbox uh, music. They've changed that now because it's called Groove Music. They've changed the name of this app for Groove Music. I think it's maybe nice that they did that because Xbox has one problem. When you call an app Xbox, in the head of pretty much everybody that uses Windows, they say, oh, well, I don't have an Xbox, so this is not useful for me. And I've seen that a lot because people were telling me, well, you know, Xbox movies, I don't have an Xbox, so I will never use that. Well, it's because it's not just for Xbox, it's also for the computer. But I can understand why people get mixed up. So by renaming some of the apps, I think it's not a bad idea. So now it's Groove Music. Well, this work will they sell a lot of music i'm not sure uh, you know we have our music favorite music uh spot on the internet uh, you know and even itunes as it's probably probably the number one uh place where people buy music so it's uh, kind of difficult to really have something working well so but let's hope that it does and now we do have a store where you can actually buy uh, music. So Groove Music replaces the uh, Xbox Music app, which is interesting. Apart from that, still the same things. You can still customize 
uh, your start menu. That's something that a lot of people ask me. Um, I don't like the tiles. Can I customize? Of course you can customize. All you have to do is right click on the tiles you don't want and unpin from start and you'll customize your start menu experience like you want to do it. So um, it's really nice. And you know, you've got different spots as you see here in the first versions you can you could take the start menu and resize it pretty much as you want it was more flexible now you see that it's in steps there's a, a way to actually make the start menu bigger if you want as you see here but it's really in steps uh, you can see that there are specific spots where it's going to do it uh, instead of being as flexible as before and you cannot do a full screen as you see here uh, from this spot you have to change the settings to have it full screen because a lot of people mixed up the tablet mode when you had full screen they thought they were in tablet mode but they were still in the desktop uh, talking of tablet mode of course improvements all the time with the tablet mode that's for sure so when you actually go into tablet mode your experience becomes a full screen experience uh, for a touch enabled um, computer and some of you asked me what how how does the the, the computer know um, if you have a desktop mode that you want or if you have a touch uh, interface and you want to go in tablet mode basically they look at mouse and keyboard if your computer has a keyboard plugged in it's gonna go by default to desktop mode but if it sees that there's no keyboard plugged in then it's gonna go to this tablet mode because it will th will say well okay there's no keyboard here it means this is a touch device probably so um, that's pretty much how they know and uh, tablet mode of course is improved uh, there are new things for example in tablet mode you'll be able to see apps on the left side that are open uh, like in Windows 8 you could see all the apps that are open and choose one well that is coming back of course you have the hamburger menu that brings you to the different options here uh, that's for sure apart from that works very well slowly but surely things are coming up uh, no error messages I haven't had any freezes I haven't had any problems it's very fast crisp I really enjoy this build um, once again if you're thinking of moving on to the insider previews and you were a little scared these builds are just so good that I think anyone can just install this and enjoy um, using Windows 10 uh, insider preview this the build is just so solid and pretty much everybody that's been commenting in the past few builds told me wow I love Windows 10 the way it is now it is working fantastically well I've had no issues no problems that's pretty much what everybody says and actually even Microsoft says that no major issues have been detected in the past uh, weeks with the builds so uh, you know we're a long way from 10130 that was really really something bad for me and um, actually a lot of people were stuck there I got a lot of people saying oh wow thank God for the uh, builds image builds that they can download because I was stuck at 10130 and I couldn't upgrade that's pretty much what happened to me also so uh, a great build works really well uh, most of the changes in the coming builds will of course be mostly bug fixes that's pretty much what we have bug fixes right now are what the uh, Microsoft team are working on so um, this is pretty much where we are at bug fixes and uh, also improving the different uh, cosmetics of Windows as we're heading through the uh, release date not very far away actually 18 days as of uh, today July 11th and um, one of the things that happened this week that we're not really sure why uh, RTM retail to manufacturing was supposed to happen uh, yesterday July 10th and it did not apparently something happened and it did not so is it because of a glitch or something they that happened and uh, the, the, the version of Windows 10 they wanted to send out was not entirely okay to send for RTM we're not really sure but um, it was 
not done as it was supposed to yesterday, meaning it's probably going to happen early next week, Monday or Tuesday. So this is the look and review of Windows 10 Pro Insider Preview 10166, another great build by Microsoft. Great way to see that Microsoft is really on the track to get to the release of uh, Windows 10 on July 29th. If you enjoy our videos, why not subscribe to our channel? You'll be informed when new videos are online. If you have any comments, questions, anything, we're going ahead. We are going to, uh, you know, have Windows 10 videos here, a lot of them of about how to do pretty much anything. So by subscribing, you will have all these videos available where, that can help you if you're stuck or have problems. And of course, all the upgrade process will be documented in videos here. So you'll see how to upgrade, you'll see how to do clean installs, you'll see pretty much how to use Windows 10 to the max. So thank you for watching.